Welcome back, everyone, to this series called Why Christians Should Keep the Law. This is episode 45, and today we are going to revisit a little bit of a passage that we have already covered. This is Romans chapter 10. However, when we, when we did cover this, I stopped just short of a particular passage that is used by antinomians to champion this notion that the law has been done away with. Because of the beautiful work of Christ, the law has been eradicated. And so it is important that we bring this particular verse to the table to take a close look at it and to see what is the Apostle Paul really conveying. And so to put this into context, we're going to revisit Romans chapter 10, verse 1. This is what we read. Brother, in my heart's desire and prayer to God for Israel is that they may be saved, because obviously that's the heart of the Lord. He's not willing that any should perish. For I bear them witness that they have a zeal for God, but not according to knowledge, which again, when he says not according to knowledge, he's not referring to the fact, well, they just don't have the written Torah. They don't have the prophets in front of them. No, uh, Israel was hearing the law and the prophets in the synagogues every Sabbath. The knowledge of God that he's referring to is the manifestation of the Messiah, the Jewish Messiah, Jesus of Nazareth. They have not received him. And so it's not according to knowledge, but verse 3 says, For they being ignorant of God's righteousness, again, explicitly referring to Jesus himself, and seeking to establish their own righteousness, have not submitted to the righteousness of God. They have not submitted to Yeshua, Jesus, the, the Melech HaYuadim, the King of the Jews. And so because they have rejected Jesus, they are, as Paul describes here, seeking to establish their own righteousness. In other words, if you go back to the end of uh, chapter 9, remember what Paul said. He said they were pursuing the law of righteousness, and yet they could not attain to righteousness. Why? Because they don't submit to Jesus. And so that's the thing. Again, the structure of the faith, understanding it takes Jesus. You must possess Jesus, and you must be willing to follow him in obedience, keeping his word, his commandments. And it, it, the, the, the irony here is that you have this Jewish population who is rejecting Jesus. They're pursuing the law of righteousness. And, and that law, as you look at that law, that whole thing testifies of Jesus. And the very thing that the law of Moses testifies of, they are rejecting. Again, you know, in all reality, they're a walking contradiction. And you can be a walking contradiction on either side of the aisle. Those who receive Jesus and, and profess that he is the savior of the world and that through him we have redemption of sins, but refuse to obey him, that is a walking contradiction. Or if you say, oh, I believe the Torah, I believe in the commandments of God, it's legitimate, it's valid, but you reject Jesus, you are a walking contradiction. Now, we don't want to be on either of those extremes. Uh, we want to be on the narrow path where we possess the reality that only through Jesus can we be saved and forgiven. And therefore, because of his redemptive work, we are now going to pick up our cross and follow him in obedience. All right. That said, let's get to the verse in question. Romans 10, 4. For Christ is the end of of the law for righteousness to everyone who believes. Now, what is the, con you, you have the context to, this is so important. You have Jewish people rejecting the righteousness of God, seeking to establish their own righteousness. This is the context. And so 10.4 is a crescendo moment where Paul responds to that, to that grave error and says, don't you understand? Christ, Jesus, is the end in the Greek it's actually telos. It is telos, which literally means end goal. In other words, Paul is communicating this idea that Jesus is the conclusion of what the law declared. 
He's the evidence of what the law prophesied of. And it's, in other words, it's absurd to not receive Jesus and yet say, I'm pursuing the Torah. It's an absurdity. And so Paul comes out of the gate and says, Christ is the conclusion. He is the end goal of the law. He's the point of it all. Let me tell you what Paul is not saying. He is not declaring here the, uh, the, the abolition of the law, but rather its ultimate fulfillment in Jesus. And understand, there is a significant difference between saying, ah, you know, Christ abolished the Lord, law or Christ fulfilled it. Because this is the context of, by which uh, this expression is coming to us. And to further build on this, it's interesting, Peter uses the same terminology, but a, a little different expression. Look at this. Peter says in 1 Peter 1 9, receiving the end, the telos of your faith, the salvation of your souls. In other words, receiving Jesus, who is the end of our faith. Now you look at these two passages together. Paul says Christ is the end of the law, okay? And here Peter says that Jesus is the end of your faith, okay? We're, they're saying the same thing, but they're using very different terminology. Now, is Peter saying that because Christ came, we no longer have to believe? I mean, that's, that's the conclusion you would have to come to in Paul's epistle to the Romans. But that's not what Paul is saying. He's not saying the law has ended. No, Christ is the goal, the end conclusion of what the law declared because he is the law made flesh. Stay tuned. Uh, we're going to be turning a corner in our next episode. May the Lord bless you and keep you.